name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Welcome as we join together in our various places on this second Sunday of the season of Easter. Today we hear the story of Thomas who doubted Jesus' resurrection but on seeing him declared him as Christ and Lord. We too often doubt God's love for us and the way in which he forgives all that we do wrong. And yet in his resurrection we have an assurance that he is with us always and always ready to forgive. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sin, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, our hearts to you we raise. Joy and peace on us in highest heaven praise. Songs of adoration, Lord, to you we bring. Praising your great goodness, Father, heavenly King. Glory to God, our hearts to you we raise. Joy and peace on us in highest heaven praise. Son of the Father, bearing this world's sin. Lamb of God, have mercy, grant us peace within. You, O Christ, are holy, you alone are Lord. With the Holy Spirit, evermore adored. Glory to God, our hearts to you we raise. Joy and peace on earth, in highest heaven praise. Let us pray. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness 
that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and for ever. Amen. Now we go and join you in your homes as we hear the readings for today. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of powers, wonders and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. Today's psalm is Psalm 16. The response is, O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. Protect me, O Lord, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. My heart therefore is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures for evermore. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. So this is the second reading. It's from Peter, 1 Peter 1, and verses 3 to 9. A reading from the first letter of Peter. 
Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us new birth to a living hope through resurrection, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being pro- protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now, for a little while, you've had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy for you are a receiving receiving the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls amen this is the word of the lord thanks be to god alleluia alleluia i am the first and the last says the lord and the living one I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's good to have the opportunity of speaking to you this morning. I hope that you are keeping well. Here we are, the second Sunday of Easter. It still seems very strange to be keeping it in this way. 
Today has traditionally been the day when people have remembered doubting Thomas. Jesus spoke to him and said, reach out your hand and put it on my side. Don't doubt, but believe. When we were small, we listened wide-eyed to stories, scarcely questioning their truthfulness. We were drawn into the world of the story itself, enchanted by elves and giants, dragons, even hobbits. That species other than our own can talk and think, as in Watership Down, or that some people might fly or have an X-ray vision, seems not even remotely odd or to spoil our appreciation of the tale. But that credulousness doesn't last. As we grow older, our imaginative ability and willingness to suspend disbelief seem to be steadily eroded. Perhaps Thomas's disbelief isn't quite the same phenomenon. No one was asking him to clap his hands if he believed in fairies. It was something far more ridiculous. As we age, the harsh realities of our world, including the fragility of life, impinge more upon our consciousness. They seem to crowd out our ability to believe. In first century Palestine, illness and death, with this air of hopeless finality, were closer to home, even than us today. For Thomas, who may have seen Jesus die, there can be no doubt Jesus was dead. Why are we surprised that he could not believe what his friends told him? On that Easter day, behind locked doors, the disciples feared a similar fate. But Jesus himself appears. Bearing the wounds of crucifixion, he breathes on them, a sure sign of life, and bids them be at peace. How could they calmly make sense of this? Yet John says they rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Their absolute certainty of his death is shattered. Their aching emptiness healed. But not so for Thomas. He wasn't there. His life-conditioned certainties are untouched. A week passes before Thomas can share the reality of the resurrection. Although we have a perfect view of what he has missed, we also will be asking for concrete proof not mass hallucinations of people who never quite lived up to expectations. While they're excitable as children, after a Harry Potter film taken in by the special effects, Thomas knew Jesus was dead. And death is death. Or is it? How does Thomas react when Jesus offers him proof? My Lord and my God. No small change of heart a man of certainties. Jesus says that those who see no evidence but to reach the same conclusion are blessed. Can we win such a blessing, surpassing sceptical Thomas, who would rather trust his common sense and years of life experience than the untidy, unpredictable extravagance of God? Two factors may have been influenced Thomas's behaviour. Like a child growing blind to the wonder of a favourite fairy story, Thomas's estimation of God's awesome power has been whittled away to a scarcely operative faculty. The ugliness and injustice of the material world blotted out from his heart a host of possibilities. Thomas has made mankind too large and God too small. As humans are bound by death, so is Thomas as God. He's forgotten that God made the world and everything in it. Secondly, Thomas's understanding of love is compromised. He can't see that those bound to him and their beloved master in friendship would not betray his trust with lies or try to make a fool of him. He also underestimates the love of God in Christ, for this is the God who will be with him always, even to the end of time. In Thomas, we might recognise that pride which sets our own narrow, self-centred world over against the inexpressible truth, beauty and wisdom of God. The marks of the nails, the gash of a spear, are Thomas's proof that God is far greater, more patient and generous than we are, in our short-sightedness, usually. For as we abandon our innocence, our capacity to marvel and worship without understanding, we steer ourselves towards a human death. Yet God can take the very worst that we can do, and still transform us. But how? 
particip participate in Thomas's transformation, we must see our risen Lord as he really is. Paradoxically, that involves letting go of the painful certainties of human life. We need to become children once more, laying aside the testimony of our senses and experience may make us as foolish as the disciples did to Thomas. But the inexplicable spirit, that spark of the divine, can help us perceive the mystical goodness and the reconciling power of a God beyond understanding. If Jesus was dead, there's no doubt. Nor need we doubt that God could and did raise him to new life. Today we continue our celebration of the wonders of God's love. Jesus Christ is risen today for us. To him be glory forever. Just as Thomas believed in Christ, so we declare our belief in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. Trust in God. We ask that our own trust is strengthened in the face of doubt or uncertainty. We are sometimes a bit like Thomas, asking for cast iron evidence when the truth is deeper than that, when our own belief could be stronger than that. We thank you that you sent your son, that he died for us and that you raised him up. May we accept the testimony of the disciples and the lasting impact of your commitment to our frail humanity. We give thanks for the evidence of your resurrection by the enduring presence of the church and we rejoice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Generous God, give to your church the skills for mission and the heart for healing in this broken world. Let individuals and communities find comfort and spiritual sustenance when they seek them. May the churches of this benefice demonstrate, through hospitality and outreach, that self-giving love we saw so clearly at, Chris at Easter through your Son. Enable our online worship and communications to reach out to those desiring spiritual and emotional support. Empower our telephone and social media communications to bring comfort and reassurance to those in lockdown at this time of COVID-19 isolation. May our confidence grow through inspiration, our courage develop through grace, our commitment through faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, in a world of temptations, 
untruths and compromise give us resilience and hope to make things better. When we see hardship, suffering, oppression and injustice, especially at this time, empower and equip us to take action underpinned by prayer. We give thanks for the inspiration of people like Captain Tom Moore undertaking a challenge to raise charitable NHS funding and the public response of goodwill and generosity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, we give thanks and praise for the communal spirit that enhances our common worldwide challenge against coronavirus. Be with governments, leaders and organisations who have responsibilities to enact measures to protect their peoples. We especially remember people and places currently involved in conflicts and where lasting peace seems a distant dream, including Syria, other areas of the Middle East, Mozambique and Jerusalem. Bring closer, Lord, the cessation of armed struggle and the search for enduring peace. The peace that only you can give. We pray especially for displaced peoples, asylum seekers, refugees in camps and those separated from loved ones by isolation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of fellowship, in our own community we pray for those who feel isolated, anxious or afraid, especially if unemployment is an issue. Remember those who had long prepared for events, occasions or medical operations have seen their plans postponed or cancelled. We give grateful thanks for the support offered by volunteers, by family, friends and neighbours that ensure the elderly and frail are not left to cope alone. Please protect all who help others and give encouragement to continue. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, we offer thanks for the health and care workers who are taking risks and working tirelessly to save lives in this and other nations. We pray for those afflicted with disease and those near to death. May those who are experiencing illness and distress at this time know the comfort of hope through your love and the power of healing through your spirit. In our benefits we pray especially for those with COVID-19 and other ailments that they have load, been loaded that they have been laid low by. Let those around them now giving patience and sensitivity to aid in their recovery, find help and find alleviation from the pain, physical and emotional. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we remember those here and worldwide who have died in recent times. In our benefice, we pray for those who have died and have been called home to you. Remembering Janet Ingram, David Harper, Iris Ty, Melvin Bass and Tony Axford. And those whose anniversary of death falls at this time. Reginald Jack Collier and Leslie Ronald Saul. May bereaved loved ones perceive them through the tears of their grief and then know that you are with them as they mourn. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full. you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. 
send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of Mary the mother of God Mary Magdalene the Apostles and all the Saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honour and glory be yours Almighty Father for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen jesus says i am the bread of life whoever eats this bread will live forever Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Amen. let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Lord God our Father, through our Saviour Jesus Christ you have assured your children of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well as watching this do have a look at our website to have updates on news and information and you'll find the weekly sheet every week still appears there this week at the beginning of that it has a little bit about the email list that we're trying to put together so that we can keep everybody up to date and informed if you follow the instructions on the top of the pew sheet or elsewhere on our website you can join that list and be kept up to date with all that's going on from day to day and week to week. Hope that you're all keeping safe and well in your houses. Do let us know how you're getting on. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, 
be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.